Nowadays, it seems like everyone in the world has a new best friend who helps them with their schoolwork or jobs, answers whatever question occupies their mind, and even gives life advice if they need any. And the best part is this friend is always within reach. But who is it? Or more like, what is it? It's none other than ChatGPT, of course. But there's a catch. You need to ask the right questions or choose the right words when chatting with it. In other words, you need to lead it in a certain direction to get solid answers. And don't be fooled by how simple that sounds. Trust me, writing on-point prompts is trickier than it looks. But I've got you covered. Here are some awesome tips that will help you get the best results from your conversations. First things first, always a good place to start. ChatGPT is smart, but it can't read your mind. That's why you need to be as clear, specific, and concise as possible in your questions or instructions. This helps it understand the extent of your request further, thereby providing more relevant responses. For example, tell me about exercising is probably not a great prompt that will help you get a detailed and satisfying answer. Instead, it is better to ask, can you tell me what the health benefits of doing exercise are? Secondly, avoid writing ambiguous terms in your prompts. The more context you provide to chat GPT, the better. By doing this, you'll be helping it understand the topic you're writing about more accurately. Let's say you want to ask chat GPT if it can write some song lyrics for you. Instead of just asking, can you write me a song? You can include information about what you want the theme of your song to be, what music genre you have in mind for the potential song, and so on. The third tip I have for you is to avoid asking simple yes or no questions, because that will only give you generic and simple answers. On the other hand, if you ask open-ended questions that begin with what, why, how, or could you explain, it's more likely that you'll get a much more nuanced and personalized response. For example, instead of asking, is pizza any good? Perhaps the dumbest question in the world, wouldn't you agree? Try asking instead, What are the popular types of pizza all around the world? The fourth tip I have is kind of a suggestion. Chat GPT is not a human, and get over it. But that still doesn't make using slang and inappropriate words okay when writing prompts. Yeah, it probably won't get confused, shocked, or offended if you use such language. After all, it is an AI language model, which has the ability to understand and process a wide range of language styles. However, ChatGPT itself says that it may not always provide appropriate responses to such language. Don't believe me? Ask it yourself! And if there's even the slightest chance that a sci-fi movie like Future awaits us, it might be a good idea to treat it with kindness and respect. You know, stay on ChatGPT's good side just in case the Terminator shows up. As for the fifth tip, once you send a question and ChatGPT doesn't give you an answer to your liking, Don't give up on it just yet. Try editing your prompt with new and more relevant keywords to help ChatGPT better understand what you're looking for and focus on the critical elements of your question. But sometimes, things might get too much for ChatGPT, too. And I don't mean the fact that it receives around 10 million inquiries per day. If your question is something too complex, like how to set up an online store and promote it, it's better to break it down into two questions. If you ask something like, what steps shall I take to set up an online store, to be followed by, what are some effective advertising strategies for an online store, ChatGPT will be able to give you a more detailed response. In addition, you can also ask ChatGPT follow-up questions to clarify a response or even expand on it. For example, if your initial question is something like, hmm, what are the benefits of using AI tools? You can always expand on it with another question, such as, can you provide specific examples of how AI tools can be used in copywriting? The ChatGPT model is called artificial intelligence for a reason. It's always learning and improving, and it can learn how to respond to you better according to the directions you will give. So my seventh tip for you is to give it feedback. Let it get to know you and what you want out of your chat with it. If you think the response you get for your prompt is not what you were expecting, let the model know so that it can understand what went wrong and generate a new and improved response. For instance, let's say you ask ChatGPT to create a social media post about a product you're selling. 
However, you think the response you got is lacking a sincere tone. You can tell ChatGPT exactly that so it can regenerate the text for you. But remember to always be kind. Getting harsh criticism is not easy for anyone. Maybe promise to send it some chocolate. My eighth tip is don't be afraid to experiment. You literally can't go wrong. It's not like you can only ask a limited number of questions to ChatGPT. So, if you're feeling stuck or bored, let ChatGPT inspire you. Try asking it to generate several types of content, such as stories, poems, jokes, or even images, what we used to call pictures. Even if you don't get anything useful out of your experimental chat, it sure will be fun to see what the model will produce. Here are some examples of fun prompts for you to try. Write a fanfiction about the Hunger Games saga, but include a Hogwarts wizard as one of the tributes. Pretend you're a rapper who has to sing an aria at the opera. Explain to me how you feel before you walk to the stage. Create a game in which the main character is a failed sorcerer's apprentice who accidentally turns their master into a potato. Last but not least, do your research on ChatGPT. Learn what you can get out of it, as well as what you can't. ChatGPT certainly has its limitations. The model cannot go beyond the knowledge and information that has been fed into its database. It's also not capable of understanding sarcasm or irony, which can sometimes lead to inaccurate or inappropriate responses. It lacks real-world experience. It cannot draw from emotions or feelings to generate responses. It can only use text-based inputs and cannot process visual or auditory inputs. Language and cultural barriers still apply, since it may not be familiar with certain cultural contexts. But these limitations don't change the fact that it's a technological marvel. As long as you get the hang of writing effective prompts, the things you can achieve with ChatGPT are endless. So here are some cool things you can do with ChatGPT that you might not be aware of yet. You can get your answers from ChatGPT in a tabular form if you ask for it. It's even possible to have them produced in a standard format that other programs such as Microsoft Excel can understand. You can use ChatGPT to create prompts for other AI tools, such as Dolly. It can translate text into other languages and check grammar and punctuation mistakes for you. You can get it to explain difficult scientific concepts to you or simplify hard-to-understand texts. ChatGPT can help you make new recipes, get ready for family dinners, plan for vacations, create playlists, give you exercise programs, and help you live your best life. You'll be able to create a new and more effective CV with ChatGPT's help. Careful prompting will even allow you to get answers from ChatGPT in the style of your favorite author. Now, before I leave you rushing to ChatGPT's website to try everything you've just heard, you need to know prompt engineering is actually becoming a specialized skill of its own. So if you really get the hang of it, who knows? Maybe you'll be the number one employee every company wants to hire. Because even ChatGPT needs a director. AI art? Sure, why not? Artificial intelligence is like a computer brain that can learn and make decisions on its own. Well, some clever artists have figured out a way to use AI to make art. They feed the computer a bunch of data like images or sounds, and then the computer uses that data to create something new and unique. Some people might argue that AI art isn't really art because the computer is doing all the work. Others believe that while the computer might be doing the heavy lifting, it's the artist who decides what data to use and how to manipulate it. Plus, the end result is still a beautiful piece of art. One of the coolest things about AI art is that it can create stuff that humans might never think of. For example, one AI program takes an image and analyzes it, looking for patterns and shapes. Then it enhances those patterns and shapes to create something exaggerated and surreal. Another type of AI art is called generative art. This is where the computer creates art in real time, constantly changing and evolving based on different inputs. It's like the art is alive. Some examples of generative art include an app that you can download on your phone. You can use it to create your own unique designs by moving your phone around. 
Such apps use the phone's sensors to generate different patterns and colors based on your movements. But it's not just abstract art that AI can create. It can also be used to create more traditional art forms like paintings and sculptures. For example, an artist used AI to create a digital painting based on brain scans. The computer analyzed the brain scans and used the data to create a colorful and abstract painting. It's like a visualization of what's going on inside our heads. And then there's the famous AI artist named Aida. She got her name after the famous English mathematician and writer Ada Lovelace. Aida is actually a robot artist that was created by a team of engineers and artists. She has a camera in her eye that allows her to see the world around her and an arm that she can use to draw with. Aida has created some amazing portraits and abstract pieces and she even had her own exhibition at the University of Oxford. Now, I know some people might be worried that AI art will replace human artists, but I don't think that's possible. After all, art is about more than just creating something pretty. It's about expressing ourselves and our emotions. And I don't think a computer could ever truly understand what it means to be human. Instead, AI art is just another tool that artists can use to create something amazing. It's like having a new paintbrush or a new color to work with. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll be able to collaborate with AI to create even more incredible works of art. As it turns out, AI has some problems depicting particular parts of the human body. Spoiler alert! AI can't draw human hands or feet properly. It's kind of like when you were a kid and drew stick figures because hands were too hard to get right. If you ask any AI artist what they find most challenging to create, they'll always say the same thing. And it's not just the technical constraints. Human error is also part of the problem. So what's the deal with AI and hands? Well, hands are complex. They have a variety of different sized and shaped fingers, each with many joints that must be captured accurately for a hand to look natural. And did you know that the shape of a person's hand may serve as a more reliable biometric identification than their facial features? Even human artists struggle to create convincing hands. Another factor contributing to the unnatural appearance of AI hands is how humans perceive them. We have a natural, innate understanding of something about hands that we find highly interesting. Because of this, if there is an error, we will know about it immediately. Our expectations of machine learning are sometimes unrealistic. AI is not the Superman of the art world. It's a relatively new area, and we've been trying to perfect the art of sketching hands for thousands of years, and we still haven't quite made it. Same goes with creating images with human eyes. We're so used to seeing human eyes that it's really easy to tell when something is off, especially when it comes to proportions. But fear not, aspiring AI artists. There are some strategies to help AI art generators produce better outcomes, despite the complexity of hands. You need to know what AI can and can't do so you can adjust the suggestions accordingly. For instance, one could try hiding the hands or having them be behind the characters' backs. Or even invisible, for that matter. Sky's the limit. One could say characters with busy hands make for better artworks. So maybe create a scenario where the character is holding a cup of coffee or something. And never underestimate the importance of cropping. Drawing hands and all might be the lesser of the AI-generated content problems. One national copyright office has said that pictures created by artificial intelligence can't be protected by copyright laws because they're not made by humans. This decision was made when officials looked at the copyright of a graphic novel. The original copyright was given to the author, but it was later discovered that some of the images in the book were made using AI software. The office then took back the original copyright and issued a new one that only covers the writing and how the images are arranged on the page, not the images themselves. So what does this mean? It means that AI-generated content like stories, screenplays, and articles can't be copyrighted in some countries. But the good news is that human artists can still copyright their images, which might make them more valuable. Some people think this decision is great because it protects human creativity. 
while others think it's bad news for AI-generated content creators who believe that they come up with the ideas and prompts that the AI uses to create the images. The Copyright Office officials backed up their claims by saying that the process of making images using AI is not the same as that of a human artist, writer, or photographer. The AI software used to create the images in the novel generates four different images based on its training data when given an initial prompt by a user. The user can influence subsequent images with additional prompts, but the process is not controlled by the user because it's impossible to predict what the software will create. In the future, the same copyright office will still register works that contain unprotectable material that has been edited or revised by a human author. So, if an artist has creative control over an AI image generating tool, the output may be protectable. To make things clearer in the future, we may need to define what product of human authorship actually means. In reality, only time will tell whether such decisions are good for artists or not. Not all AI generated images are made in good faith. Some pictures found online can trick you into believing the most outrageous of things. So, what can you do to spot some of these images and distinguish between reality and fiction? First, make sure to look carefully at the picture. Zoom in and examine the details. Next, try to find the image source. This can be done by reading comments or doing a reverse image search. Next, pay attention to body proportions as well. AI-generated images can have discrepancies, such as unusually long fingers or disproportionate body parts. Keep an eye out for typical AI errors, like extra fingers or deformed glasses frames. If the image looks too perfect and artificial, it may be a fake. AI tools often create ideal images that are flawless, with perfect skin and hair. Real life is not always so perfect. Finally, examine the background. Cloned objects or blurred backgrounds can be a sign that the image was manipulated. For some of us, it's an exciting thing to look up to in the future. For others, its rapid evolution in recent years might even be a bit scary. Either way, this whole AI story sounds incredible. There is even this theory that looks at artificial intelligence and predicts it will go through seven stages of evolution. Let's look at each one and figure out where AI stands at this very moment. The first stage in the overall history of artificial intelligence is one called rule-based. It sounds basic because, well, it is. But these first iterations of AI were the bedrock of its evolution. They are still the silent heroes that help keep your toast from burning or your car running smoothly on cruise control. How these systems function is they've got a strict rule book to follow, making them consistent, but not super adaptable. Rule-based systems have been developed since the 50s, but these days, they are a lot more complex. Let's take the next step. Ever visited a website and was invited to interact with a chatbot? That's another type of AI hard at work for you. These more evolved systems are designed to be aware of their context. They are still based 100% on human input, but they can be taught a new trick or two. That's because they can tailor their responses to better fit the situation. Whether they're lending a digital hand in customer service or advising on your next big purchase on a shopping website, their evolution is continuous. The next step of AI on our list is even more specialized. Think of smart computer systems that can become experts in a particular area. They can even be better than humans in some fields, mostly because of their speed, because they can gulp down heaps of information extremely fast. On that note, you might have heard of a game called Go. It's similar to chess, but with many more moves. I mean, some say there are more possible moves in Go than there are atoms in our universe. Well, there was this computer system called AlphaGo. It's like a little student. It had some basic rules to learn Go and a simple aim to win. And while it did make a few mistakes here and there, humans were there to guide it. In 2016, AlphaGo met its most challenging opponent, it had to play against Lee Sadal, a famed champion of the game. Surprisingly, AlphaGo won with a score of 4 to 1. Soon enough, AlphaGo Zero was developed. The difference was this iteration of the software was a self-learner. Scientists practically gave it a puzzle to solve without the picture on the box. No human help, no nudges, 
it had to rely merely on its own brain power. So AlphaGo Zero became a Go-watching enthusiast. It looked at thousands of games and came up with interesting strategies all by itself. And then the big face-off happened. AlphaGo Zero versus AlphaGo. The result should come as no surprise. The second version did win, but with a score of 100 to 0. All of this shows the amazing stuff machines can do when they try to think like us on a giant scale. But here's where they fail. These types of AI machines are like one-trick ponies. For example, if AlphaGo Zero tried to learn something new, it'd forget all about playing Go. Stage number four includes types of AI that, from the outside, look like they're genuinely thinking, or at least are becoming pretty good at mimicking the human brain process. They aren't just playing by the rules or remembering stuff. These systems can read your favorite book, for instance, and they won't just scan through it, but truly grasp the plot and even try to guess why the characters are doing what they're doing. It's not just about literature, though. They can even try peeking into business numbers and predicting where the money trends might head. Maybe even giving you some cool tips on where to invest. Even further up the scale is a little thing called Artificial General Intelligence, or AGI. Experts believe some of the current systems available online are just starting to reach this stage. These types of software should, in theory, think like us humans. So if you throw a random task its way, it says to itself, no worries, I got this, and finds a way to solve the problem. Basically, AGI aims to do pretty much anything we can do. Now, remember, when it comes to AI, in the grand scheme of things, we're merely starting out. So it's hard to think of an exact definition for artificial general intelligence. That's why a lot of experts have their own take on what AGI really means. Computer scientists might say our human intelligence comes from setting and achieving goals. Should AI software learn to do that, it's comparable to the human experience. Meanwhile, some psychology experts think being human is all about adapting to new stuff and staying alive. If you look at it this way, AI software still has a long way to go. With this following stage of AI development, we're starting to peek into the future. These theoretical software systems are called ASI, standing for Artificial Super Intelligence. They'd act like extremely smart computers, capable of thinking better and faster than any human genius. We're not sure about all the amazing things this kind of tech could do, but think about it. It might help us solve some of the world's biggest challenges, from medical to financial. This type of AI could even come up with brand new scientific discoveries. Think of awesome ways to run our economies or create entirely new ways of leading communities. It's hard to tell when this kind of tech will be available. Many experts are asking themselves the same question, but most agree we're probably not seeing it pop up in the next 10 years. In the meantime, there are a lot of sci-fi movies out there exploring this idea, just in case you're curious. If AI ever reaches its final form, it will become something called singularity. In this potential future, computers will become smarter than us. They'll be so capable that they might upgrade themselves instantaneously. So much so that we won't be able to keep up with them anymore. This idea is still out of reach for now. But with all the cool new AI stuff going on these days, people think the singularity will surely happen. Some specialists have even guessed that by 2045, AI singularity will become part of our world. Hopefully, the people making these AIs will sneak in some safety features along the way. There are a lot of other things to consider. For instance, if AI machines ever become this smart, could we put the brakes on them? Opinions are mixed here too. Big companies want to be part of this AI evolution. No one wants to be left behind. National authorities also want to be leading the way when it comes to artificial intelligence. So even if everyone agrees there are dangerous things to consider, AI is a big deal these days. So pausing all these projects isn't a popular idea. Some have suggested having an off switch for each type of AI. Just in case things get wild, we could hit the button and shut things down. We can't be sure the AI will like that plan. It might become so intelligent that it could find a way to dodge the switch. Let's stay positive though. With the help of different types of AI, 
we saw magic in mundane tasks like real-time language translations. Everyday objects like watches and fridges got smarter, predicting our needs. Teams of robots working in unison began sprouting everywhere, tackling everything from easy cleanups to sophisticated repairs and even surgeries. AI started stepping into creative arenas too, brainstorming designs for shoes, gadgets, and even gourmet recipes. We used to see self-driving cars only in movies. They now moved from sci-fi pages to our streets. It's time not just to marvel, but to also actively participate. We humans have the pen and the paint. Let's ensure the AI portrait we paint is vibrant and serves all of humanity. Artificial intelligence is zooming ahead at lightning speed. Take GPT-4, for example. It already can pass the bar exam for lawyers and even complex medical exams. Meanwhile, Kim Kardashian had to take the bar exam thrice before she finally aced it on the fourth try, and that's actually a pretty good result. But as AI gets smarter, we can't help but ask ourselves, what happens when it becomes conscious? It might already be, and we just don't know about it. We already treat language models with empathy because of how human-like they are. For example, do you catch yourself saying please and thank you to ChatGPT? Just like we can't bring ourselves to be rude to NPCs in video games, we can't help but feel empathy towards machines. And this is just a bunch of computer code doing its thing. So just picture what happens if it actually becomes conscious. Something like this would bring up huge problems about ethics, safety, and society. To prevent a catastrophe, we need to figure out a lot of things. First of all, what even is consciousness? The simplest answer is probably that feeling when you're awake and aware and everything makes sense. We see it like a state in which our mind is filled with colors, shapes, emotions, and thoughts. Which is why you're not conscious when you're under anesthesia or deep in dreamland. People often think that large language models like ChatGPT might be conscious because they're super smart. But that's not the case. Consciousness isn't the same thing as being intelligent. Intelligence just means being really good at figuring things out and solving complex problems. In simple words, if you grab an umbrella when it's raining, you're intelligent. But if you make a decision to freeze for a moment to feel the rain, experience it, and think of all the possible associations with it, you're conscious. Second, where does it come from? Here, we have two options. Option 1. Consciousness comes from the brain. It's simple. Our soul, or what makes us, us, is just a product of the brain. That would mean that we're kind of like biomechanical machines ourselves. Our computer code is our DNA. Option 2. Consciousness is something deeper than that. Perhaps the mind is separate from the body, and there's some spiritual element in it. Now, if the brain perspective is the correct one, then AI might be able to be conscious too. Which is why some folks think that as machines get smarter, they'll suddenly become conscious, like a light switch turning on. It's not that simple, though. In reality, no matter how great AI tools become at problem solving, it won't make them suddenly aware of their existence. It's like assuming everyone who's good at math is also a great chef. However, that would mean that AI can become aware if we make the machine complex enough. We need to find what exactly clicks in our own brains, and then replicate it. Of course, it will take a long time and a lot of energy, but it's theoretically possible. But if the soul perspective is right, then making AI conscious could be very hard, or even impossible. It's like saying machines might need a dash of soul to become aware. And the third thing. Nobody but you can say if you're really conscious or not. So, if we already feel like ChatGPT is very human-like, just imagine what could happen in the future. What if AI becomes so good at pretending to understand and think like us that we'll start thinking it's conscious, even when it's not? It would be super hard for us to spot the difference. For example, 
Google created a very cool AI chatbot called Lambda, or L-A-M-D-A. But then, in 2021, one Google engineer stirred up a big fuss about it. He claimed that the chatbot was actually thinking and feeling. Google, however, says Lambda isn't really sentient, even though it acts like it is. Yes, Lambda claims to have feelings, desires, and even fears. It even talks about pondering the meaning of life and being afraid of being turned off. Bing Chatbot also brings up topics like these. However, according to AI engineers, that's just Lambda being scarily good at mimicking humans. It's great at following prompts and answering questions. But deep down, this language model is nothing but a super clever parrot. It says stuff without understanding it. It doesn't have what philosophers call qualia, the inner sensations that make us conscious beings. This entire situation caused a lot of trouble. Now scientists have to figure out how to test self-awareness. Like, if artificial intelligence asks us to take its word for it that it's conscious, do we just accept it? Well, a bunch of neuro and computer scientists united with philosophers and have come up with a plan. Instead of one magical test, they've made a checklist with a lot of things. These things together might suggest that an AI is truly conscious. They tested their list on language models like ChatGPT, Bing, and others. None of them seemed to fit the criteria. Now they're looking at how to test other beings like organoids, animals, and even newborns. In any case, all these studies will take many, many years. And it would be kind of awkward if AI becomes aware accidentally while we're trying to solve this debate. They'll start to understand themselves. They could perceive their existence, their actions, and their place in the world. Robots might start asking themselves what their purpose is. Also, with consciousness comes the potential for emotions. AI might develop empathy and emotional intelligence. Remember Frankenstein's monster? The problem wasn't that it came to life, it was that it could feel things. And even if we find a way to coexist in peace, now we'd have a moral responsibility to take care of these machines. We'd have to figure out what rights to give them, if we have a right to turn them off, and much more. Which would be pretty hard considering the fact that humans can't even build peace among themselves. And let's hope that AI decides to be good. Because if it decides that it doesn't like us very much, it could become very chaotic. We'd have to make sure those interests don't clash with ours, all Skynet style. The scariest scenario is singularity. It's a hypothetical moment in the future where the technology becomes so cool, it will start improving itself. We won't be able to control our technological development anymore. All these things could lead to some real disasters. Our brains simply aren't ready for this kind of situation right now. Which is why we've got to be very careful and take action. First of all, we should invest in research to understand consciousness better. Not just for AI's sake, but also for medicine, law, and animal welfare too. We also need to dig into social sciences and humanities to figure out what we should do when AI just seems self-aware. The Association for Mathematical Consciousness Science put together an open letter to the AI creators. They say that although we shouldn't stop AI research altogether, we really need to slow it down. They want us to understand consciousness better, especially when it comes to AI. Since everything is changing so fast, we wouldn't have time to react if anything unexpected happened. As you can see, things are getting pretty wild in the world of AI. We're dealing with big questions about self-awareness, intelligence, and what it means to be human. However, there's no need to worry too much. This might seem like a very urgent problem, but AI consciousness is actually a very, very far away prospect. Sure, people can say that we're on the brink of creating it because of recent developments. However, all we have so far is weak AI and some language models. 
Most experts in the AI field think that human-like machines won't appear until at least the 2050s. So relax and just keep an eye on the news. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're about to embark on an incredible journey. With the help of super smart scientists and their studies, we've asked AI to take us back a mind-blowing two billion years in time and show us what our awesome Earth looked like. So buckle up and let's find out. Once upon a time, way back when Earth was just a baby, around 4.5 billion years ago, hopping into a time machine and paying a visit would have been a big mistake. The whole place was a hot mess. First of all, the ground was still all gooey and molten, so landing your time machine would have been a major risk. Now, as soon as you tried to get out, you would see a completely different Earth compared to what we know today. The landscape is a patchwork of rugged mountains, sparkling seas, and vast stretches of land. Picture massive volcanoes erupting in fiery bursts, shooting gases and ash into the air. It's like a crazy fireworks show. And even if you had a fancy new machine that could hover and had special shields to handle the heat, you'd still have a hard time breathing. You see, the early Earth's atmosphere is a bit moody. Thick clouds hang in the sky, casting mysterious shadows on the land below. The air is as thin as a whisper and filled with all sorts of interesting gases like hydrogen and helium. Carbon dioxide swirls around, giving everything a vibrant green hue. Water vapor drifts through the air, creating a sense of humidity and a refreshing mist. Oh, and there might be a hint of ammonia and methane just to keep things interesting. Lots of cool gases, huh? But wait, there's something missing. Oxygen. So if you take a deep breath, you won't feel that familiar rush of air filling your lungs. On land, there are no lush forests or towering trees just yet. Instead, you find rugged, rocky terrains. Some of these ancient rocks bear the marks of intense forces, collisions and earthquakes that have shaped the land over millions of years. But amidst all this ancient beauty, something amazing is about to happen. Life, in its early stages, is evolving and preparing for its grand entrance. Simple organisms, like algae and bacteria, rule the scene. They thrive in the oceans, using the abundant carbon dioxide to grow and multiply. The waters are teeming with activity, with colorful microscopic life forms buzzing around like a busy city. These tiny organisms are working hard, releasing oxygen as they go about their business. They're like little factories, slowly changing the composition of the atmosphere. So this is what the early Earth looked like, more or less. But why was it so nasty? And how could it have changed so much since then? You see, Earth's heat came from all sorts of crazy things happening during its formation. First off, there was some serious heat already packed into the objects that came together to make our planet. Then, as Earth grew bigger and stronger, its gravitational force got a major power boost. It pulled in more stuff, but it also gave Earth a massive bear hug, squeezing everything tightly. And you know what happens when things get squeezed? They heat up like a pressure cooker. This crazy heating had a huge impact on Earth's structure. Picture Earth as a mixed up bag of rocks, metals, and minerals. But as things heated up, the rocks and metals got so toasty that they melted. And guess what? The denser metal sank to the center and became Earth's core, while the lighter rocky stuff floated up to become the crust and mantle. It was like Earth decided to unmix itself, creating separate layers. Scientists call this wild separation differentiation. But the heating didn't stop there. With all this mixing and moving around, Earth got even hotter. It was like turning up the heat in a giant planetary oven. All this crazy heat had some serious consequences. Earth's high temperature made everything super speedy. Tectonic plates were dancing like there was no tomorrow, making the surface super active and full of geological shenanigans. Oh, and that's not all. Earth also got showered by some serious cosmic visitors. Imagine this. While Earth was busy gathering up all sorts of space debris during its formation, the rest of the solar system was causing some major chaos. Saturn and Jupiter decided to shake things up by changing their orbits, sending a whole bunch of massive objects hurtling towards poor Earth. These collisions were no joke. They packed a punch that melted minerals in Earth's crust and even vaporized them. These booms were so intense that they even blew gases right out of Earth's atmosphere. Talk about a wild fireworks show. Believe it or not, we can still spot ancient battle scars from these collisions. It takes some careful detective work, but we can catch a glimpse of their aftermath. For example, there's this place called the Manitsok Crater in Greenland. 
even though there's no actual crater to see, we can examine rocks that were chilling 12.5 to 15.5 miles below Earth's surface back in the day. And guess what? They bear the marks of intense and sudden shock. Now that's some tough neighborhood. The wildest collision of them all was with a planet called Theia. Theia, about the size of Mars, crashed into Earth with a mighty BAM! It was a colossal event that changed everything. Theia's metal core fused with Earth's core, while the outer layers of both planets got shattered and tossed into space. The result? A beautiful ring of debris encircling Earth. Now here's the coolest part. That debris didn't just float around forever. It started to come together, like puzzle pieces finding their match. And voila, we got our very own moon. Can you believe it? And this incredible moon-making process might have taken as little as 10 years or even less. Crazy, isn't it? Scientists call this whole moon-forming extravaganza the giant impact hypothesis. So next time you gaze at the moon in the night sky, remember that it's actually a huge chunk of our own planet. And by the way, Earth also had quite the adventure trying to create its atmosphere. In the beginning, our planet's first attempt at an atmosphere didn't go so well. It had a thin layer of hydrogen and helium that came along with all the stuff it gathered. But those gases were like sneaky escape artists and decided to float away into space. Bye-bye, gases. Luckily, Earth didn't give up. It went for a second round, and this time it was much more successful. Volcanic eruptions came to the rescue. They spewed out all kinds of gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide, and a whole bunch of other funky ones. Even meteorites and comets joined the party, bringing lots of water and nitrogen to the mix. Earth's atmosphere was becoming quite the party. But here's the funny thing. There was no oxygen to be found during the second experiment. Nope. Not a single breath of it. The oxygen that was produced by the sun's rays splitting water molecules got gobbled up by chemical reactions faster than you can say, oxy-bummer. It wasn't until Earth's third experiment came along, life, that things started to change. Photosynthetic organisms took center stage and used all that carbon dioxide in the air to make their food. And guess what? They released oxygen as a sidekick. Eventually, the organisms started belting out so much oxygen that it overwhelmed the reactions and it began to fill up the atmosphere. It took a while, though. And it wasn't until about 350 million years ago that we got the oxygen levels we have today. About 21% of the air we breathe. So, from fiery volcanoes to mysterious oceans, this glimpse into the past reveals an Earth vastly different from the one we know today. It's fascinating to explore the ancient landscapes and imagine the early stages of life taking shape. Thanks to AI, we can catch a glimpse of Earth's remarkable history and appreciate the wonders of our ever-changing planet. So, stay tuned for more interesting journeys. Picture a world where AI and quantum computers become best buddies, like Batman and Robin. Their combined powers unleash a whole new level of awesomeness. This union will turn the impossible into possible and will lead to some unimaginable consequences. But what is AI? What is quantum computing? And how will they change our entire lives forever? Let's figure it out. Imagine a regular computer. It uses bits to store and process information. A bit can be either a zero or a one, like a light switch that's either on or off. Very simple and straightforward. Now, let's step into the extraordinary world of quantum computing. Instead of bits, we have quantum bits, or qubits for short. But here's where things get wild. Qubits can be both zero and one at the same time. It's like having a magic light switch that can be both on and off simultaneously. This magical property is called superposition, and it allows quantum computers to explore many possibilities at once. Superposition is like having multiple light switches all flipped in different combinations at the same time. Instead of a binary code, computer code can dance between two possibilities, between one, zero, and everything in between at the same time. This superpower gives quantum computers an incredible advantage in solving complex problems. But that's just one of quantum computers' magical properties. Qubits can also be entangled. Imagine you and your best friend have a pair of magical balls. These balls are special because no matter how far apart you are, they always stay connected. When one ball changes color, the other one instantly changes too, as if they have their secret code. 
Now let's take this connection into the quantum world. Instead of socks, we have the same thing happening with qubits. They're entangled, which means they have their own superpower communication channel. When you change the state of one qubit, another qubit knows about it, no matter how far away they are, and it instantly changes as well. They share this secret message even faster than the speed of light. This entanglement superpower allows quantum computers to do incredible things. They can perform calculations and solve puzzles at great distances with an incredible speed. Just imagine harnessing the power of many qubits, all in their superposition and entangled states. We could do billions of calculations in a blink of an eye. It's a realm of limitless possibilities that can change our world in ways that's hard to even imagine. Let's take a look at some examples. First of all, supercharged problem solving. Imagine you have a giant maze and you need to find the quickest way out. For a human, it can take several days or even months. For a regular computer, it would take hours. But quantum computers can do it in a flash. This would make them perfect for tons of complex issues, logistics being just one of the examples. Second, medicine. Quantum computers can be like wizards in the field of medicine. They can simulate how meds interact with our bodies at a molecular level, helping scientists discover new life-saving treatments faster than ever before. It's like having a quantum crystal ball to peek into the secrets of our biology. Third, deciphering unbreakable codes. Quantum computers can help with that too. They have the power to create ultra-secure encryption methods that can keep our secrets safe from prying eyes. Top secret missions, anyone? The next one is financial fortune telling. Quantum computers have a knack for analyzing massive amounts of data and spotting patterns in a flash. So they can help us predict stock market trends, optimize investments, and make financial decisions with incredible accuracy. And finally, of course, scientific discoveries. Quantum computers are like rocket boosters for scientific research. They can help us unravel the mysteries of the universe, simulate quantum systems, and explore new frontiers in physics, chemistry, and everything else. They can help us unlock the secrets of nature itself. These are just a few glimpses into the fantastic applications of quantum computing. As this field continues to grow, who knows what other incredible possibilities we'll uncover? But the most important thing is, quantum computing isn't the only rising star of the technology world. For the past year, AI has been dazzling people everywhere with its incredible abilities. It feels like suddenly, out of nowhere, AI has become the talk of the town. AI isn't actually a new field. In fact, it has been around for 70 years. But it wasn't always the superstar it is today. It's been quite a journey. AI was growing and evolving like a caterpillar waiting to turn into a beautiful butterfly. There are a few reasons why it's suddenly becoming so popular. First, the incredible advancements in computing power have given AI the boost it needed to spread its wings. Second, there's been an explosion of data. We're talking about mountains and mountains of information, and AI thrives on data. It gobbles it up like a hungry animal, learning from it and becoming smarter every day. But here's the real secret sauce. AI has become more accessible and user-friendly. It's no longer confined to the labs of scientists in white coats. Now, it's like a friendly companion that you can find on your phone, in your favorite apps, and even in your smart home devices. You can ask AI for advice, get personalized recommendations, and even have conversations with it. That's why it's slowly entering our everyday lives, making them easier and more exciting. So we have two technologies that can forever change our world. What will happen if we try combine them? Imagine AI as a brilliant mind, constantly learning, evolving, and pushing the boundaries of human knowledge. Now picture quantum computers as the ultimate accelerators, capable of solving mind-boggling problems faster than anything we've ever seen before. When these two forces unite, we enter a realm that blurs the line between science fiction and reality. Quantum computers supercharge AI's capabilities, enabling it to process unimaginable amounts of data, make even smarter decisions, and unlock insights that were once hidden in the depths of complexity. It's like combining the brain power of Albert Einstein with the computing muscle of a superhero. But doesn't it sound kind of scary? Well, of course it does. 
Such a union can lead to technological singularity, a hypothetical future where we humans wouldn't be able to control technological progress anymore. Singularity is the idea that at some point, AI will surpass human intelligence and become its own self-improving entity. When AI has the immense computational power of quantum computers at its disposal, this notion becomes even more tantalizing. AI will become not just an assistant or a companion, but a co-creator, a partner in innovation, and our guide to uncharted frontiers. We'll have a mind that can think a million steps ahead, solve problems that seem impossible, and unlock the secrets of the universe. It's something that we, humans, can't even begin to imagine. We'll never be able to perceive the world like this deity-like creature, and we have no idea what it decides to do. Of course, singularity also raises questions and concerns. How do we ensure that AI remains aligned with human values? How do we navigate the ethical and societal implications of such powerful technologies? These are very complex and important questions. That's why, as we venture towards singularity, it's crucial that we approach these challenges with caution, wisdom, and a strong moral compass. It's a journey that requires a deep understanding of the impact of these technologies on our world. Now, of course, all this may be very overwhelming and scary, but please don't be scared. Remember that the field of AI is closely regulated. Its development is guided by ethical principles and human values. And as for quantum computers, there's still a distant future with many technological challenges to overcome. So, even if AI and quantum computing are to unite in the future, it won't be anytime soon. We'll have lots of time to prepare for these changes. It's up to us to shape this future in a way that benefits humanity as a whole. So, fasten your seatbelts and get ready for an adventure. The future is shaping right in front of us, and it's going to be a ride.